Hi, this is Phil Linton. Welcome back to another video here on avforums.tv and uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Derek from Carmen. Now, Derek, uh, we've uh, spoken for years in emails and so on and obviously we use your software for our, uh, our reviews, but it's great to see you in person for, for the first time. So. Yes, it's great to meet you guys and we're glad you were able to make it out to CES and uh, give us an opportunity to demonstrate the, the new software we're working on and some of the new hardware um, that we're working on with companies that we're partnering with. Now, um, for our, our, our members and our viewers and people who maybe watch this on YouTube, um, what we're talking about is display calibration. Um, so maybe you can give us some reasons as to why display calibration is, first of all, important and how the end users traditionally go about having their displays calibrated. Okay. What we found um, is the way manufacturers develop their products is they want them to be attractive when you go to the showroom floor and they want them to look unique or different. But that typically deviates from how the displays are, um, the director's intent of how the displays are to be viewed. And so we've developed software and uh, various hardware pieces that enables an end user to be able to calibrate their set once they've got it home. There's a set of standards for high definition that the director uses in the post and broadcast studios that when they're developing content. And the goal is to give the end user that same experience that the director or um, production team is looking at. So what products are we about to look at today then? Um, we're working on Calman 4, which is the latest generation of our product, the next generation. And then we've also got a video um, equalizer to help add capabilities to the displays that the manufacturers aren't providing for color correction, gamma correction, and grayscale correction. Okay, so let's look at, at the first one. I, th I think the one that's going to interest uh, most people out there is the video EQ. So let's have a look at that and uh, what we can do with it. Okay, let me go ahead and set up a demonstration um, and what we're going to be doing is bringing up a chromaticity chart that shows basically what a display is capable of, of producing. So we're going to display all the greens, reds, blues, um, all the magentas, cyans, yellows, and that whole spectrum and then we're going to show you with the uh, video EQ how much control we have over that. So basically we're bringing up a chromaticity pattern and so we're able to look at all of the colors the display is capable of producing. Often what happens is when a manufacturer ships to the display, um, they're taking your reds, blues, and greens and oversaturating. They're making them much brighter and much greener or blue or red than they're normally supposed to be. So with this product, we're able to control the color that's coming out of the display. And an example that we've been demonstrating for the last few days of how much control we have is I'm going to tell the processor that we don't want any red within the primary portion of the display, but we're going to leave the secondary portions to the magenta um, intact. So if I go in and say to desaturate red all the way to white, basically you'll see all of this saturated to white and this whole section now, this whole section now is white. I can do that with the other primaries as well. I'll desaturate those. And so the only thing we have in this diagram are the secondaries, the yellow, cyan, and magenta. Um, I can also do that with the secondaries. I can desaturate those to white. So essentially we've taken all of the color processing out of the image ended up with just a standard grayscale. Um, that shows how much power we actually have over the uh, traditional signal processing. We can do the inverse of that. I can go back and add in the primaries and leave the secondaries out. And these are good examples. So when somebody is looking at a traditional CIE chart, to give you an example of how the secondaries and primaries make up the chart. And so we can see this much area is primary, this much area is primary, this much area is primary. And we actually, the secondaries are actually a very small portion of the overall um, color palette. Um, another example that we've been showing is how much color or how much control we have over live pictures. Okay, so we've switched to um, another pattern that shows us kind of the demonstration of, of material you would be looking at. Traditionally, we've looked at flesh tones to try and determine how to calibrate a display. Um, and those typically aren't necessarily a good indication of, of how to calibrate a display. And one of the examples here is we'll see that we've got a lemon here and a yellow clock. I can go in and change this picture and take all of the yellow out of it completely. So as we were doing in the previous demonstration where I was removing yellow just from the chromaticity chart, here I've removed yellow from the entire picture and it really didn't change the skin or flesh tones that much. Um, again, with the signal processing, Anything that was yellow is currently white. I can change those back to yellow. Let me set this up. 
to show what the, the picture would normally be. But then I can also change the hue of yellow, and we can do that with all the primaries and secondaries. We can basically shift all the way around the chromaticity chart. And so this example, we're going to change our lemon to a different citrus fruit. And now it's a lime. But we only, um, we barely changed the rest of the, the skin tones and flesh tones. We, the only thing we really affected was the yellow portion of the screen. We're going to change it the other direction and show that we can turn a lime back to an orange. And the one we just found out this morning, experimenting with, is we now came up with a new citrus fruit that is blue. I'm not sure what we would call this, but now we've got a blue citrus fruit. So this gives you an example of how much capability we have over the color coming out of the display. So the whole goal of this is the display manufacturers want to make displays brighter, brighter colors, more, um, more colors, and our goal is to bring them back into standards and provide software, hardware, or other controls to be able to do that. And I guess, Derek, what we're saying here is at all times the people viewing this have been able to see the skin tones below. Yes. And a lot of people set up their displays by looking by eye, by looking at skin tones. And what we've just shown them is that even if the skin tone looks right, the clock that should be yellow could actually be green or blue. or So they really need to think about colour in a different way. Yes, primarily skin tones. If you're looking at skin tones, let me go ahead and reset this back so we've got a proper picture. And we'll show you how much color is actually in skin tones. So we get back, okay, so we've got our yellows, everything is back. I'm gonna desaturate red itself and we'll see what happens to our skin tones and our subjects here. So from this example, by removing red from the signal, we can see that's a majority of what our flesh tones or skin tones are. So by adjusting flesh or skin tones, the only thing you're really correcting is a very, very small portion of red and there's a lot more color gamut that's available that needs to be corrected as well. So Derek, everything that we've just shown uh, the viewers here has been done by this little box, so maybe you can explain what the little box is about and that the TV had absolutely nothing to do with what we were seeing. Yeah, the idea with this box is we basically take the HDMI signal, we've got an input and output, and we're able to manipulate the signal within this box before it gets to the TV. So the goal is if the TV doesn't have these type of controls or this capability, we can do correction before it gets into the television. And this is all by HDMI and you know, it's very easy for them to set up? Yes, um, it's over HDMI. We've got a USB connector. You're connecting to your computer. We've got a really simple interface within the computer to manipulate the controls within this box. And I guess uh, the important question is how much does this technology cost and who does it come from? Um, this box is $1,200. Uh, it comes from AV Foundry. Um, we've also licensed some technologies from XView, the gentleman that uh, wrote some of the CMS code itself. Um, and then SpectraCal, we're a reseller for AV Foundry, and then we're also setting up European distributors for, to carry the AV Foundry and SpectraCal products. And uh, our next video is going to show how the Calman software integrates with this. Yes. Yes, we've got a Calman version 4 that we've been working on for about the last six months. And the idea is, within the calibration software, you can control this box directly. Okay, well, uh, Derek, thanks for... Uh, taking us through this on the first video and come back for our next video very soon. All right, thank you.